Today we're going to talk keyboard expression pedals. So I now have experience with at least three different pedals. The most recent one that I've been using, I only got as recently as about 10 months ago. And that was the Nectar NXP Universal Expression Pedal. It is this one right here. I've been using this for about 10 months. Um, I think at the time that I got it, I wasn't, something happened to the pedal that I had before, wasn't able to find it, disappeared, things sometimes happen. So I was looking for a replacement that wasn't gonna cost an arm and a leg. Did find this, um, it only cost me $25 and it lasted a total of 10 months. So, you know, I guess the things that seemed okay about it is it did come, as, as I've been used to with expression pedals, the cord attached to the unit. So I've been, I've been used to that. It does have on the side here an adjustable pot so you can set your, your minimum volume parameter. Um, and, and the cost was extremely reasonable. And I think at the time I bought it, I looked at some reviews online and the reviews seemed generally okay. So what went wrong with the Nectar pedal? So let's talk about this. Two main problems with, with this pedal developed over time. The, the, and the first one was just out of the box. So even if I set this pot for like the maximum control with, with the pedal, the amount of precision that I could dial in with this was very limited. So the way this seemed to work is from the lowest position to maybe about the middle, I was able to go from you know, no volume to getting something, but then getting more precise control going up into the maximum MIDI volume range just wasn't there. It, it seemed that you know I was able to move this from the bottom to about the halfway mark and then after that, it was like being at full volume. So precision volume control wasn't possible with this. I learned to adjust and, and live with that, but wasn't really thrilled with that. And then two weeks ago, something else started to occur with this pedal. So I was at a rehearsal and I noticed in midway through rehearsal, one of the songs I had in electric piano patch on my keyboard and it sounded like it was underwater. So, you know, I, I looked at the uh, settings on the patch thinking maybe there was an inadvertent chorus effect put on the piano, no chorus effect. I thought, okay, well maybe as I sometimes do is if the previous song, if I was using organ, sometimes I leave my mod wheel set up uh, to the top where the previous Leslie effect was engaged, thought maybe I did that, looked at the mod wheel, exactly where it was supposed to be, what's going on. I've lately been using Korg module on my iPad to uh, dial in sounds, and we can maybe talk about that another day. Extremely convenient, but I opened up the electric piano program that I was using, and as I was playing, I noticed where the volume knob was showing on the display, was just on its own, just kind of moving, it was oscillating. There was nothing I was doing to prompt that. And um, during the course of the rehearsal, I wasn't sure what was causing that. I didn't know if it was an issue with my keyboard, which my master controller, I'm using an Alesis QS8 because it's still alive, but thinking, okay, maybe it's finally giving out and maybe the foot controller output is causing some voltage fluctuation. Long story short on that is after coming home, I troubleshooted what could have been causing this volume situation, which can't play with that. Turned out it was something happened with this pedal. So it ceased to give a stable I guess voltage connection, whatever it is that is transmitted from here into the keyboard. Um, when I disconnected this, everything was working fine, connected this again, and everything was out of control. I, I tried this with another keyboard, etc. This was the culprit, so had to say goodbye to this, and it was time to find a new pedal. So back online we go, and 
this time I was looking for something that was going to be more reliable. Ended up making a decision to go with the Boss EV30 Dual Expression Pedal. Scoped this one out both on Sweetwater and Amazon. I did end up getting this one through Amazon. I think I got a better price point there. But it came in this box. It is notably more pricey than the Nectar expression pedal that I had. And perhaps this is one of those scenarios of you get what you pay for. So just have had this for about a week and a half. And I'll show you the unboxing, right? It's already been unboxed, but just so you know, when you get this, inside the box is the pedal, which is this guy right here. We'll take a look more at this in a little bit. There is um, a set of instructions that comes packed with it as well. And I didn't notice this with the first unpacking, but also inside the box in here is a cord that you use to attach the pedal to your instrument or device of choice. I've been using my own cable, but now that I see the other one is in the box, I'll swap that one out. So a couple of notes about this pedal and its features. It's compatible with guitars, with pedals, with keyboards, and MIDI controllers. It ships with an included quarter inch cable. And the weight of this is one pound, 12 ounces. And right out of the gate between these two pedals, this one is substantially more heavy. So it seems much more well built. This is very plasticky, extremely light. Um, this one you can use as a, as a paperweight for sure. Um, so that's the first thing I noticed, just the build quality. It's really rugged. I think it's an aluminum construction. And on the back on this one, I mentioned that the title of it is Dual Expression Pedal. So there are two inputs in the back. There's, I don't know if you can see it too well on the video, but there's these small pots for each input where you can dial in the, um, the range that you want for control on either input. And then in the middle is a polarity switch. So some pluses on this, um, if you're so inclined and if you have a need, I, I don't at the moment, but if you want to control two different units from one pedal, this allows you to do that. So that's one of the features of the Boss EV30. The mention on the advertisements is that the polarity switch helps to ensure compatibility across different devices. We'll talk about how this one has worked out for me so far because I have found an anomaly that I have since found a solution for, but we'll get to that in just a moment. And then the last thing about this before I kind of get into using it is just in general, the precision level of control that's possible on this pedal is also night and day compared to the Nectar. So where the Nectar was very difficult to control. This one has a very nice sweep across the range. I'm using this as a volume controller. So it's connected to a foot controller on the back of my master keyboard. CC7 signal is what I'm using to, uh, to control this. And so far it's been very nice, very easy to control. The day this arrived was literally about 15 minutes before I was heading out to rehearsal. So I grabbed this, took it out of the box, threw it in my bag, and at rehearsal, found an extra cable, connected it to here, the other end into the back of my keyboard, and was hoping for the best. And, you know, the first thing that I did is I think, you know, as I had this connected played one hand on the keyboard and started moving this up and down to see if the volume was getting adjusted and indeed it was i was at the time connected to input one and we'll get to that in just a moment too but was what was unusual for me was every pedal that i've ever used for decades has worked on a keyboard such that when the pedal is in this position volume is zero, and as you start to move it to this perpendicular position, that engages full volume. What I found with this at my first rehearsal using this is with the cable plugged into here, 
volume was being controlled, but completely backwards. So just to make the best of the situation in the moment, I had to kind of, you know, rethink the position and do everything backwards, which I was kind of able to do. But when your muscle memory is configured over decades to expect one thing one way, something else the other, um, there were a few moments where I, I got things backwards but was able to adjust. Um, and even during rehearsal, I thought, hmm, maybe this, that has something to do with the polarity switch, but it didn't matter if I had the polarity switch to the left or to the right. The volume control could, happened to be the same way. Everything was working backwards from what I expected. So when I got home, I took a peek at the instructions that came with the pedal just to see if there was any hint about the operation of the pedal, if, if it was working as designed, if there was something else I needed to know about. And there is a note here that says, if the polarity switch is set to INV, expression two, so that's the second input, operates in the opposite direction of control as expression input one. Then it says you can choose the setting that's appropriate for your performing style or for the effects that you want to control. So the solution for me, and again, I'm only using this for controlling one device, but just simply moving my input from input one to input two, and then having the polarity switch set to inverse, that was all that was needed to get this pedal to operate the way I expected. So use this again last night in rehearsal. Again, the build is really solid, really like the way it's, um, it feels. The amount of control is wonderful. And after figuring out that one trick for, probably for a keyboard player um, at least, using input two, setting the polarity switch to INV. Um, and then I've got the pot here set to maximum control. It's working great. Reading the reviews on this pedal, I think the only thing that I've come across from some people as, and it's not a big negative, it's more of an observation. For some people, they note that the width of the pedal is less than is found on some other pedals. So I think especially if you've used the expression pedals from Yamaha, and I've got one or two of those, the footprint on those is, is uh, wider. I haven't had any problem with this at all. And sometimes when I've got multiple things under keyboards to economize on space is nice. So I appreciate the narrow size of this. It's been wonderful. So that's a take on this expression pedal from a keyboards player perspective. Hopefully the, uh, the trick that I mentioned is helpful to you. If you end up getting one of these with the intent to use it to control volume on your keyboard. I'm not a guitar player, so I don't know if in the guitar world, what I experienced with kind of the opposite effect, if that's um, more of what's expected when you play guitar. For me as a keyboard player, it, it is not but there's a way to configure this so it works as I was looking for. So there you go. That's the Boss EV30 Dual Expression Pedal. I'll have a link for purchasing this in the video description below. And again, hope this was helpful to you and thank you for stopping by to watch this video.